inside Santa Cruz. I'm Joyce Anderson, and we're here at the Coconut Grove with the Red Cross Central Coast Heroes Breakfast of 2015. And I'm Rick Martinez, Deputy Police Chief for the City of Santa Cruz Police Department and also the current board chair for the Santa Cruz County Chapter of the Central Coast Red Cross. And I'm Michelle April. I'm the CEO for the Central Coast Chapter and the American Red Cross, serving Santa Cruz, San Benito, and Monterey counties. So let's all listen to our hero stories, the amazing stories. Thank you. Good morning. My name is John Wagner III. I am a captain in the United States Marine Corps. I served in Ambar Province, Iraq, back in 2009, and I am the CEO of Semper Fresh Farms. Semper Fresh Farms began as a project where we actually had an organic farm growing uh, red Russian kale and Swiss chard, and now we're uh, transitioning into a veterans transition program and partnering with the uh, United uh, Veterans Coalition as well as the Veterans Transition Center of Monterey County. Our goal is to hold an annual job fair for our local veterans, and we're currently looking for a place to hold this annual job fair. As I transitioned from the military life to civilian life, I found it very difficult. I um, actually bounced around for a few jobs, and I know a lot of our local veterans have uh, skills that are transferable, but a lot of them just do not know how to communicate them. Uh, with Semper Fresh Farms, our goal is to not only help those veterans communicate their, uh, their military skills into the civilian terms, but also to uh, give them an opportunity to not only find a job, but actually a career in the agricultural field. As a, as a junior officer in the military, um, it was my job to help develop Marines and look out for their general welfare. And with Semper Fresh Farms, I still get to continue to have that bond with uh, local veterans and help and develop their progression in their lives and as in, in their careers as well. Um, I really like to thank the American Red Cross of Central Coast, as well as the Veterans Transition Center of Monterey County for this opportunity. Thank you guys. Hi, my name is Cece Pinero. First, I'd like to thank the Red Cross with wholeheartedly for this award. It is a great honor. It's such a surprise. I am like completely blown away, and I really, really appreciate it. It's, it's certainly, it was one of the things that was on my bucket list that I didn't even know was on my bucket list. I was born here in Santa Cruz and raised here. Uh, my dad was the custodian of Mission Hill Junior High for 27 years, and uh, then in uh, Right before he retired in 1986, I went to work for the Santa Cruz City Schools, and I've held every job at Santa Cruz City Schools from food service worker to assistant principal at middle school. I ran in 2002 for school board, and I won, and I served, and it was an amazing experience. And what I learned from that experience was that many people like to blame special education for the encroachment on the general fund in public education. And I took that knowledge and information, which I could only get by being there. It's like I, I saw education from every perspective. I was a student. I was a parent. I had a child in schools. My, my child was diagnosed with learning disabilities. Um, I worked for the school district. My dad worked for the school district. And then I, became, then I got on the school board. So that full rounded view gave me this perspective of how can I make a difference? What, is, what are the issues? What can I personally do, just me? So what I decided is that if I um, could help in a better way than actually being on the school board was to serve the families of kids with special needs. And through the grace of God, I was able to become the executive director of the Special Parents Information Network, otherwise known as SPIN. And we serve families who have kids with disabilities, all disabilities, and we give them what they need so they don't have to sue the schools. And uh, when I started doing this, there were 12 organizations like SPIN in the state, and now there's 14, and our goal is to get 38. So that's my vision and my goal, and I'm very privileged and honored and, and happy for this award, and I'm gonna continue to work to serve all the families, and particularly those with special needs. So thank you. My name is Firefighter Marcia Guerra. I'm from the Seaside Fire Department. Uh, I was nominated by Councilman Dennis Alexander uh, for a rescue. I've been with the Seaside Fire Department for nine years. This is my first rescue. Uh, both of our crews, the engine and the truck, pulled up to a public housing complex with an apartment that was heavily involved with fire. Uh, we are a small department, so uh, teamwork is really critical. So both the engine and the truck worked together to effect a rescue. We had one person trapped in her apartment um, with no way to get out because of the progress of the fire. 
Um, we laddered the building, um, and because we don't have a lot of people, we had to multitask, so I was assigned to go up. Um, she was panicked. She didn't know where her daughter was. Her daughter had actually been rescued by one of the maintenance workers um, on the opposite side of the apartment. Um, so I, at some point, um, I had to make the decision just to take her out of the window uh, because the fire was progressing to a point where we couldn't leave her there. So got her out of the window. Um, both crews worked really effectively together. Um, and then we, after we effected the rescue, we went around to the opposite side of the apartment and uh, worked together to put the fire out. And in closing, I'd like to thank the Red Cross of the Central Coast for this award. Hi, I'm Tony, and um, I was coming home uh, after work. I worked for disaster cleanup. It was about midnight, and um, we noticed uh, an SUV flipped over uh, close to a ravine, and uh, we pulled over immediately, and then uh, we assisted uh, an elderly man. My name is Marco. Um, as we got off our trucks, um, we went onto the flipped over SUV, and I, we, we opened the door and we noticed there was an elderly man in there uh, trying to make his way out. But it was uh, hard for him to get out because of the one, the water, and you know, he wasn't able to move so much. So uh, we uh, reached uh, for his hand and he gave us his hand and we managed to pull him out. Got him on uh, my truck and we took him to my parents' house. Uh, he was just super thankful that we managed to actually be there. Um, so yeah, we took him home and my parents gave him some uh, hot coffee. My dad gave him a change of clothes and he, was, he just kept thanking us for, for being able to save his life. And um, just talking about how cold he was in there and he really thought he was going to die that night. Well, I'm just grateful that I was uh, there at the right time, at the right place. I just want to thank Heather Ream for nominating us and the American Red Cross for the honor. Hi, my name is Leti Rubalcava. I'm a labor and delivery nurse from Salinas Valley Memorial Hospital. I've been doing this for 10 years. So Janu January 30th of this year, I walked into the bathroom at Walmart in Salinas. Um, I went in, and when, as I walked in, I recognized that there was some commotion going on in the bathroom, and I recognized s sounds coming from one of the bathroom stalls that sounded like labor. And I recognized that within a few minutes, of, uh, seconds of me being in the bathroom. There were two employees standing outside of the stall, and I asked if they needed any help. Um, initially, they said no. The person on the phone asked a question to the person that sounded like she was in labor. That made me kind of ask again, are you sure you need any help? I'm a labor and delivery nurse. At that point, they said yes. Um, they opened the bathroom door, and then I asked the employees if they could bring me some towels and blankets. They did that right away. Um, I assisted her to the floor, um, and then within a few minutes, the paramedics were on their way, so was the fire department. Um, at, within a few minutes of getting her onto the floor, I, we had a delivery. On that day, um, I helped deliver the baby girl at approximately 10.34 on that Friday morning. I'm glad to say that she is doing well. She is um, doing, meeting all her milestones as, as a premature baby. Um, this mom is also doing well. Um, I am humbled and honored by all the attention that I have received. It's really, um, we go into nursing because we care, because we like taking care of patients, and we, we that doesn't stop when we leave the hospital. So um, it's really an honor to do that. It was an experience that, you know, the remarkable experience that I, I would never would have imagined that I could have handled the way I did. But my training that I have as a nurse and my many years of experience helped me, help me uh, you know, stay comfortable and relaxed and able to, to assist mom and baby through that delivery. I just want to thank the Red Cross of the Central Coast for this award. It's truly an honor. Thank you. 
My name is Brantley Sandretti. I've worked for Capitol Police Department. This summer will be four years. I started out as a police explorer, then I moved on to part-time parking officer, uh, community service officer. I worked as a reserve police officer and recently became a full-time police officer. This last summer, it was uh, in late August, I responded to a subject down call. It was a apparent heroin overdose off 46th Avenue. I arrived on scene. Saw a subject on the ground laying unconscious. Uh, his buddy was performing CPR already. I asked him to step aside and check his vital signs. He was still unconscious, not breathing, had a very faint pulse. I began doing chest compressions on the male subject for about two minutes until fire and paramedics arrived on scene. They uh, continued with CPR and ultimately gave him a Narcan and resuscitated the male who was later transported to Dominican Hospital. About a week later in early September, I was again dispatched to a subject down. This time it was at Bed Bath & Beyond in the Brown Ranch Shopping Center. I responded code three with uh, my emergency lights and sirens. I found a distraught family in the back of the store. There's a, again a subject down on the ground. He was on his back. This time when I checked vital signs, he didn't have a pulse. He wasn't breathing. He's completely unconscious. His whole family was there crying. It's a pretty chaotic situation. I began CPR on him. A couple moments later, my partner arrived on scene and we alternated cycles. Uh, we gave a few moments for paramedics and fire to set up all their equipment. Uh, they began their AED system and gave him some epinephrine. Uh, they continued working on him for about 20 minutes and he was later transported to Dominican Hospital. I was able to call Dominican and actually advise that he had survived the situation, which was very fortunate. I'd just like to take a moment to thank the Capitol Police Department for all the training they've provided with myself and other officers over the years, and I'd recommend everyone to go check out the American Red Cross for additional CPR training. You never really know when you're going to have to use this stuff out in the field. It's excellent to have. And I'd also like to thank the American Red Cross for the award. My name is Nathan Reynolds. Um, I'm a groundwater consultant working with uh, Calam Water on the desalination project in Marina. I, I was uh, uh, leaving my, my job site um, uh, at the sand mine in, in uh, Marina, um, heading back to the, to the hotel. Um, I stopped at the intersection, a car that was making the left-hand turn didn't stop and uh, instead of making the turn, um, they uh, went straight and uh, hit the curb and, and uh, went down the embankment through the bushes and I, I, uh, since I had been working in town for so long, I, I knew that there was water down in this pond. I could see the, the people inside were just, they were waving their arms around, you could tell that they were uh, in, a, in a bad situation. Um, but they weren't getting out, and uh, I knew there was a there had to have been a reason why they weren't they weren't getting out of the vehicle and, and swimming to the shore. So I, I took my, my my boots off, and um, and I swam out to the car, and uh, at that point I saw that it was a a, a, a grandmother, a great grandmother, and uh, and her great granddaughter in the car. I had, I had the grandmother roll her window down and. Uh, she she told me that they can't they can't swim, and and they're in the, this vehicle, in the middle of the pond, and the the car was sinking, and so um, we decided to um, that that the little the little girl should should come out of the car first, and uh, and I would try to swim her to the shore, and um, so she came into the water and uh, the water's ice ice cold um, it's it was pretty it was, it was freezing water. Um, and she, uh, but she, she reacted well. She was very, very calm. She wrapped her arms around my neck, and I, I um, swam, swam with her to the to the opposite bank. Um, and at at that point, uh, I looked back, and the and the the car was starting to dip below the surface of the water. Um, I I swam back to the car to um, to help the the grandmother. Um, she had trouble getting out of the car. She was um, she was stuck, and so we uh, I had uh, I helped her. I helped her get out of the car, and and uh, and just as she 
got out of the vehicle, out through the window, um, the car dipped below the surface of the water. I, I'm just grateful that, that everything worked out and that everybody's okay. And uh, I just want to thank the American Red Cross for, for this, this great honor. I really appreciate it. Hi, my name is Lynn Hummer, and I'm the founder of the Pregnant Mare Rescue Foundation. And today we are at the Pregnant Mare Rescue at the Watsonville facility. I have been honored by the Red Cross as the animal hero for 2015, and I'm very thrilled to be able to share some of the work that we do out here and to have you meet a couple of the horses that we have rescued. Um, we are going to be celebrating our ninth anniversary this coming May, and in that time we have rescued, rehabilitated, and rehomed about 160 horses. We specialize and the pregnant mares and the orphaned foals who need a chance, a safe place to stay while they rehabilitate and then we help them find forever homes. Most people wonder where the horses come from. Where do you get these horses, Lynn? What is the need? Most Americans don't realize that over 150,000 American horses are shipped to slaughterhouses every year. They go to Canada and Mexico under very heinous conditions. So what we do is try our best to get them out of harm's way and get them into a safe place while we can let them rehabilitate and take care of their babies. Another portion of my work that's very near and dear to my heart is taking care of the children. I like to educate the children, have them come out, let them have the opportunity to be around horses and just to see how wonderful these animals are, that they have so much more to give than just being something that you ride. They're wonderful therapists, they're best friends, and it's a wonderful experience for the kids to come out. Big, big part of my entire organization is getting the word out, serving the community, and um, letting everybody know just how special our horses are. So we are here now. I wanted to introduce you to our latest rescue. This is a lovely mare. Her name is Zizi, and she had a little filly, which is a little girl, just about four and a half weeks ago. Zizi and her foal um, were located over in San Martin, and they were part of a rescue where 38 horses were confiscated. The person who had these horses was charged with felony animal abuse and neglect. It's really important for me to, to emphasize how important it is for people to think about what a commitment it is when you take an animal. Take them for life, love them for life. They don't want to be discarded, not your dogs, not your cats, not your horses. They have feelings. What I have come to learn is that I thought I would start this organization to do for the horses, and in the long run it's the horses that are doing for me which has just been miraculous. They're such givers and such healers, and if I could just share that message with everybody, um, it would really make my dream come true. What would be my greatest dream if I could have what I was hoping for in the grand scheme of this project, and it would be to acquire land, because acquiring land would, it, would enable me to grow my programs for the children, it would allow me to do more for the horses, and it would just really uh, create a legacy for this organization that has come to mean so much to me. I want to thank the Red Cross in the Central Coast. I can't tell you what an honor it is to be chosen. I am very, very thrilled and humbled. Um, love your pets and love them for life. They deserve it. Hi, I'm Craig Veteran. I work for uh, First Alarm Company. I'm a retired uh, police officer from the city of Pleasanton. And part of that, I was also a California State Humane Officer. I worked or have been associated with the uh, Rotary Clubs, the Kiwanis, the uh, Salvation Army, and uh, various SPCA groups throughout the Bay Area. I've been involved in uh, various uh, organizations and doing fundraising and helping various people and uh, organizations for the past 25 years. And actually the thing that's made it the easiest is the people you work with. They're so dedicated and it's really a joy. And the smile you put on someone's face when, they, when you're able to do something for them is just unbelievable. Regarding the animals at the uh, SPCA, last Christmas time, if you were in uh, Union Square in San Francisco, you would have seen me down there uh, collecting donations for the animals in Macy's windows down there trying to help the, uh, the animals in, the, in various positions down there. Um, over a number of years, I've held a position. I've been the president of Rotary. I've been the, uh, on the board of directors with the Salvation Army. I'm the incoming president for the Kiwanis Club here in Santa Cruz. And uh, like I say, I enjoy all this work and stuff and the, the satisfaction. For the past three years, I've been the uh, Kiwanians Santa Claus, which is, uh, got, uh, it, it's good, but at the same time, it's so hard to deal with uh, what these kids need and uh, when you're dealing with underprivileged kids and a lot of them are just homeless. I'd like to uh, thank Kaylee Young for uh, nominating me for this uh, award. It's, I was quite surprised uh, to, be, to find out I was nominated. 
And I would also like to encourage everyone who takes and who's uh, retired or gets some free time to come on and do something, join one of our organizations and help. It doesn't take a lot of time, it doesn't take a lot of work, it certainly doesn't take a lot of money, but boy, the help is sure needed out there in the community. So I'd like to thank the American Red Cross again for this honor. Thank you. Good morning, everyone, from the Santa Cruz Boardwalk. I hope you have a wonderful morning breakfast here. And uh, I'm Charles Canfield, president of the Seaside Company. And uh, we're a very big sponsor here in Santa Cruz of the charities and nonprofits that we have in our community. I think the biggest uh, program that I really enjoy being a part of is the Drive for Schools, which uh, this last year raised over 500000 for our local schools. And in the last 10 years, we've raised over three and a half million dollars that go directly to the schools. I started working down here at the boardwalk uh, when I was 16. I got to run the uh, kitty rides for two years, and then I moved on to the larger rides. So the thing I'm really proud about being associated with the, the business is our ability to really train young people. It's the first time they really get a full-time job working here. And they're normally buying a car, going to college. Uh, these young people are all active and uh, looking to move forward in life. And this is a great spot to start. Uh, they spend uh, summer here. They're working with a lot of young people. And it's a great opportunity for them. We have a lot of foreign students that work for us. And they're also uh, integrated into uh, all our staff here. So that's one of the things we're proud of. And there are really thousands of them over the years. If you talk to people in Santa Cruz, there are very, really a lot of them that started here at the boardwalk. And they become doctors, lawyers, uh, all kinds of professional people. And I want to take this opportunity to thank the Red Cross for nominating us as a, a business uh, of the year and uh, thank each and every one of you that really work hard in the nonprofit area and the Red Cross is really important because when we have disasters they're always there front and center so thank you very much. Hi, my name is Felicia Davidson. I am a senior at Pajaro Valley High School, and I'm actually the president of the Interact Club there. Um, Interact is a youth version of Rotary, and that's really where most of my involvement started with Interact. With Interact, we're able to focus both on worldwide issues as well as local issues, which is where I really like to put most of my energy. Um, with the club, we're able to build a community of youth who find service as part of their identity and something that they really want to pursue and use that to go out into the community and try to make our community a better place and the world a better place in general. Through the Interact Club, we've been able to participate with other organizations, amazing organizations in our community, including Jacobs Heart Children's Cancer Organization. Um, with Jacobs Heart, I'm able to lead groups of students in activities such as their Kid Rages Club Carnival, where we're able to really interact with the kids and their families. Um, sometimes we'll just dress up like goofy characters, um, but it's a lot of fun. We're also able to put on our activities with them, make cards for them, raise awareness at our school. Other organizations that we're able to work with is Second Harvest Food Bank. We help them with their annual barrel wrap. We help them with food collection um, and also raising awareness. But through Interact, one of the most amazing parts of it is the people that you're able to meet. And one of those people that I met was Lori Butterworth, who is the founder of Jacob's Heart. So after the tragic deaths of Butch Baker and Liz Butler, Lori was able to let me know what was happening. Um, it was a call to action to our community to really come together, and the youth really heard that call. And through that, I was able to help them put together the first Youth Safety Summit, and since then, we've been working on youth safety in the, both youth city councils ever since. Um, and it's something that got me personally involved with the UCD Council, but I think that also got youth to be more aware of what's happening in our community and to take action on that. I think that it's 
important to honor youth who are really getting involved and I'd like to thank all of the youth who are involved in their communities in whatever way they see fit, who are following their passions, going after issues that they see in their community and really trying to make a difference in their everyday lives. I also wanted to thank everybody that I've worked with so far um, and everyone that I'm going to be working with and shout out to my mom for inspiring me and for kind of driving that love of service into me and into my sisters. Um, so thank you to all of you and I hope that as youth we keep going and we keep doing this good work because I think that it's really important and I know that we're, where a lot of that, par that power is and where that power lies. I'm Roland Reveille and uh, we've been residents here in Santa Cruz since 1979 which is when we came and decided to uh, retire after 35 years in the newspaper business and we're never sorry that we did. Both of us just love Santa Cruz and have no intention of ever living any place else. This is our home now. We both grew up in San Francisco and as young children, our parents would bring us down to the beach and so on in Santa Cruz and, and we just always loved this area. So it was a natural for us to retire here. And um, there's so much here that we enjoy. Uh, it's wonderful to be able to go to the symphony here, to the theater, Jewel Theater has been a real plus in recent years to Santa Cruz. Uh, the Museum of Art and History did not exist when we moved here and I personally got involved in that early on and I'm so happy that I did because it has grown and is thriving. And the university, I wanted to go back to school because I hadn't finished my schooling when we moved here having raised three children and so on. And when the three children were all away in college, I was free, the nest was empty, so I decided to go back to school and enrolled at UCSE and, and had a wonderful experience there. And I'm still involved with the university as far as promoting it. So all in all, it's just been a wonderful experience living here in Santa Cruz and we hope to continue for many years to come. Pat and I have been married <clears throat> for 61 years. Uh, I first met her when we were in the eighth grade. We didn't make the mistake of going steady, but we kept in touch with each other. And when the time was right, when I was 23 and she was 24, we got married. And that's been a wonderful, wonderful decision. Everything we've done in Santa Cruz, we've done together. Uh, I don't invest in something or give to something without Pat's approval, either tacit or stated and the same is true with her when she feels strongly about investing in an, uh, the Museum of Art and History, the new uh, UCSC uh, uh, Museum for Arts and Sciences, uh, I share that interest. So we, we give thanks to, to the community for providing so many outlets for, for us to flourish as a couple and for our giving to, to to bring such great rewards and such a great return on investment. Yeah. So let me just thank the Red Cross and the community for being so good to us. And we hope that we've returned that favor and we're glad to do it.